This is what J.L. Moreno says in the first chapter of his autobiography of a genius. My father's great uncle lived in Istanbul. He had a son who fell in love with the daughter of the major of Istanbul, a very rich man. The girl was 14 and the boy 16. The two married and lived in Istanbul. As was customary among wealthy Turkish families, our cousin had a harem. After I had fully recovered from malaria, my father said, I'll take you to Istanbul for a vacation to see your relatives there. And that is how I got to stay in a harem for a while. When we visited the state, I was courted to the harem building in back of the main house. I remember walking through a very dark corridor, at the end of which was a light. Two men conducted me inside. My father was, of course, excluded. The two men who took me in were eunuchs, men who had been castrated. They were sterile, but they could have erections. When the wide door opened, I found myself in a beautiful piazza with a pool in the middle. Forty to fifty girls were bathing and massaging one another. The girls were nude. I have never seen in my life so many beautiful women in one place. They were all very white-skinned between the ages of 15 and 21. The girls greeted me in a very friendly way. They showed me around and embraced me. I was very embarrassed. There were a few other children in the heroine, for that is where the children spent their early years. Then I met an older woman, well over 30, who seemed to supervise or dominate the situation. She was the legal wife of the heroine owner. Everyone treated her like a queen. The heroine seems like a mysterious institution to Westerns. There is a good deal of folklore about it. In essence, the heroine was a social mechanism for taking care of surplus unattached women in the society. A woman had either to be married or a concubine attached to the household. An unmarried woman could live in in the household of a relative, but her status was poor, even if she lived with a wealthy person. A man could have as many as four wives under Islamic law and as many concubines as he could support. There was no prostitution in Islamic nations. Concubines were the property of the harem owner. There was a busy market in their buying and selling. Girls were sold for cash or traded for sheep, textiles, or any other commodity that the buyer and seller could agree upon. It was always possible for a concubine to buy her freedom and have a legal marriage arranged for her, if she could find the dowry. According to the rules, the heroine owner was obligated to care for the women as long as they lived. They did useful work for their masters weaving rugs and fabrics, drawing, painting, sewing, cooking, cleaning. Often the work was hard, but a harem woman could never lose her home. Only the owner of the harem had access to the concubines, although it was the custom of hosts in some Islamic nations to share their concubines with their guests. The eunuchs in the harem I visited coupled freely with the girls. Since there was no possibility of pregnancy, it was perfectly all right. On the whole, there was a tendency for the women to avoid pregnancy if they could. That may explain why there were so few children around while I was there. The girls were primarily concerned with preserving their youth and beauty, and they seemed to spend most of their time tending their bodies and faces. The money spent on cosmetics must have been staggering. They oiled themselves, used perfumes, had massages and baths. Women aged fast in Turkey, and by the time a woman was 30, she had to be extremely careful with her looks. While I was in Istanbul, I was betrothed to the nine-month-old daughter of my father's cousin. It was all arranged beforehand, a simple ritual, which I cannot recall. I remember asking my father if I should send the baby a gift. The bride, brackets, was sent a piece of cake. I sent her a dress and some other items. 
It was all done according to the prescribed customs. Of course, I never kept the promise. In any case, child marriage was abolished when Ataturk came to power in 1923. He also abolished the harem and concubinate.